Photographer Jonathan Alpari travels the world to document the stark realities of war. He has covered conflicts in places from Afghanistan and Ethiopia to Ukraine and Egypt. But on a trip to Syria in April of 2013, Alpari was kidnapped while moving toward the front lines. His new book details that 81-day ordeal. The Shattered Lens, a war photographer's true story of captivity and survival in Syria, is published by Atria, an imprint of Simon & Schuster, a division of CBS. Jonathan Alpari joins us now. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning. Take us back to that moment when you were captain. So this was my third trip into Syria, uh, and this time I decided to go through Lebanon in order to cover the fighting near Damascus, which was very heavy at the time. And at the time, the rebels were still uh, at the upper hands, and there was uh, an enclave which you get smuggled into, and from there, I covered the, basically the battle between mostly Hezbollah infantry and uh, Syrian Air Force against various uh, rebel forces. And after 10 days, they uh, decided to kidnap me instead of letting me go. Do you remember what went through your mind in that moment when you were kidnapped? Yeah, it's very strange. I think like most traumatic experiences, everything goes very uh, slowly. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then you, you think it's not really happening and it's not real. There's a mistake. and everything will get resolved. So usually there's that moment when you, uh, you think that you're actually dreaming what you're going through. You were blindfolded, handcuffed, and I know beaten uh, during your captivity. 81 days? Yeah, for 81 days. The first month, there's a lot of torturing going on, mock executions, interrogations, and they play a game with you where one day they're very nice and the other day they were very difficult with you. I think it's meant partially to break your will and to keep you on your toes so you don't really know what to do if you want to escape or try anything against them. So they really break you up like that. Now, who were the captors? So you have, as you know, many rebel factions in Syria. It's a very complicated affair. But at the time, it was mostly local militias who were fighting the regime. But because they were having such difficult problems with the Hezbollah infantry, they brought in a lot of al-Nusra front mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. who were much more experienced and disciplined at fighting. So they did it, do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's all connected, and yeah, definitely. You, you talk in the book about gaining the trust of your captors. How did you do that? It's, uh, so in this, it's a question of survival. Um, you have to pick out who you can trust and who you don't trust. So usually I would go after the younger soldiers mm -hmm. who were more interested in the fact that I was from the Western world. They were more curious about me, so they were nicer to me. The torturing and beatings were done mostly by the older or the officer group. So I spent a lot of time manipulating these young guys to make sure I would get little favors, like making sure my handcuffs were not as tight, or maybe be allowed to go to the bathroom one extra time during the day, just very little things that make your life easier. Mm -hmm. So how did you escape? Well, there was a, a ransom, which is often the case when it comes to kidnapping, that was uh, given out to by a man, which I can't give the name of, uh, of course, but he... He was part of, the, of a blacklist that was written down by the European Union and the United States of powerful Syrian men like himself who are parliamentary and close to the regime but also uh, do businesses around the world. And when you're on that list, you can't travel, they freeze your assets. And he wanted that to be gone, obviously. So by paying for me and releasing me, he was hoping to, give, uh, to get a favor from the United States or France and be freed from it, which happened briefly, and then he was put back right on that list mm -hmm. afterwards. Would, would you ever go back to Syria? Um, of course, I, uh, you're always tempted uh, to go back to these different war zones just for personal reasons. After the war, when it ends, which will most likely happen fairly soon, uh, I would definitely like to go back and see the places where I was, ki I was captured. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, Jonathan Alperi, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. We appreciate it. We're thank glad you. you're back home safe.